Let's get another take on the crisis in Iran right now. We welcome Michael Scheuer, a former CIA operative and counterterrorism expert. He served as chief of the CIA's bin Laden uh, issues st station. He's the author of Imperial Hubris. Uh, he wants to call your attention to National Geographic's very timely Iran and the West that airs tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. And from New York, Gary Bernstein uh, joins us. He's a former CIA operative as well. He's the author of Jawbreaker, the attack on bin Laden and Al-Qaeda. Thanks to both the of you for coming in. Uh, does the U.S. really know the intelligence community, Michael? Has, does it have good information on what's going on uh, inside Iran right now? I, I think it has some information, good information. I doubt it, Wolf. It's very difficult to have good information about a country when you have no representation there and no ability to work in that country in any but a very covert manner. Which is just because the United States doesn't have a diplomatic uh, embassy there, that means it has no representation there? Well, no, it's all done covertly. It's much more difficult. Our allies help. Certainly we have been trying to overthrow this regime for a long time, so we, have, we obviously have assets within the country. What should, uh, if anything, Gary, the CIA be doing uh, in Iran right now? Well, clearly you want to do, you know, collection. And what we want to be collecting on is probably the suppression which is going to come. Likely the IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, the Ministry of Intelligence and Security are going to start to make people disappear. And we want to be able to keep track of that. We want to sort of uh, do what we can to highlight this because this regime is not just going to walk away from this. These are revolutionaries who fought their way into power. They have the Iranian Revolutionary Guard there to defend the Islamic nature of the regime and they are going to suppress their population very, very brutally. It's one thing, Gary, to just collect information and bring it to policymakers, including the president. It's another thing to engage in covert action and try to affect what's going on. Do you think it would be wise for the U.S. to engage in covert action right now? Well, covert action requires both, uh, you know, daring and competence. And, and we've had, you know, that's been up and down over the years in terms of, uh, of, of covert action. But I don't think that covert action, more we need in, is, is, uh, is public diplomacy right now. I mean, covert, we're beyond the covert action phase right now. The Iranians have launched this, the population on their own. And I think that we're wise to do sound public diplomacy, get other nations involved with us, put pressure on the Iranians not to suppress their population, and to try to give birth to this, help you know, give birth to this movement. Michael, you agree? No, I don't. I, I think uh, Mr. Wolfowitz before me and, and uh, many people in the press want to sit here. They want to break the Iranian regime. That's all they are interested in here. It's a matter of power. And for Westerners to, to flicker into YouTube and to urge these kids to go out on the street and, as Gary said, fall on the bayonets of the Revolutionary Guards, to me, is, it, it's just almost criminal. The United States should stay the devil out of this business. Obama managed to keep his big mouth shut while the Israelis killed 1,500 people in Gaza. He just hobnobbed with the, with the greatest jail master in the Middle East in Cairo. Stay out of this business. America doesn't need another war at this moment, Wolf. Uh, it's just none of our business what goes on in that country. So, but you you support the president's decision to have a very sort of modest uh, public st posture, at least during this first week after the election. His first statement was excellent. Uh, it, apparently, the the neocons in his own administration now have got his ear because clearly there's no such thing as a universal right to assembly and free speech. That's that differs from country to country. That's the neocon idea of imposing American values everywhere else in the world. It's a, it's a nonsense, and it's going to get people butchered in Iran. you agree with that, uh, Gary? Clearly, Mike and I disagree on this. And, but what I'll say is this, is that I think the greatest long-term chance for peace in the Middle East is to have a democratic movement formed in Iran that we will be able to talk with in the future. I don't think this regime has any interest in stopping its pursuit of nuclear weapons. I'm, we, I don't, I'm not proposing that young people there fall, you know, dive into bayonets there. I'd like to see many of them do as much as they can to sort of bring change here, peacefully if they can, but they need to stand up. All, the entire population needs to come out and support the movement which is going on. We right only now. have a little time left. Michael, what do you, what's going to be the outcome? What's going to happen? The, the, I think the regime will hold on, and it really doesn't matter if it doesn't, Wolf, because Mosabi is going to build a nuclear weapon the same way Medinejad is going to build a nuclear weapon. You, you agree with that, Gary? I'm not sure. I don't. I, I don't. I, I think that Mousavi may take a different track if he doesn't have the uh, supreme leader as a master. I think if you have a different type of government there, I think the Iranians may take a different track. Gary Bernstein and Michael Scheuer, guys, thanks very much you, for Quite coming in. We'll take a quick break and wrap things up right after this.